So first I'm going to explain to you uh, what a cohort analysis table is, and then I'll show you how to use this data to calculate net dollar retention for large groups of customers who you acquired over long periods of time. So, okay, intro to customer cohorts. So how do cohort analysis tables work? They organize your customer data by initial purchase month of customers. Then they show the stream of subsequent purchases of those cohorts of customers through time based on that initial purchase month. And these are the most accurate way to measure your customer retention, not only for software businesses, but for all business models. So first we're gonna look at a customer count cohort, then we're gonna look at a revenue cohort, and then finally we're gonna dive into the net dollar retention cohort. So uh, here's an example. So for April 2022, which is the April 2022 cohort, we acquired 14 customers who bought for the very first time in April 2022. And so we just call this month zero because this is basically month zero or day zero of the customer lifetime. So in the subsequent month, so April, May, so that's month one of their lifetime, those 14 customers came back and they purchased again. In the next month, so that would be June, they came back and they purchased again. So you can see that we acquired 14 customers and those customers stayed active for a period of nine months straight and we actually didn't churn a single customer. Now you'll see in other cohorts, like the March cohort that we acquired 13 customers and four months into their lifetime, we actually churned off one customer. And then you can see also at month 10 of their lifetime, we, we churned off another customer. So one quick thing, if you wanted to see all of the active customers that we had in April, would it be the 14 customers we acquired in April? No, it would, it would be the 14 customers, of course, that were new customers in April, but then it would be anyone we acquired in, in March, but in the second month of their lifetime. So those would be the March customers, the March cohort who are recurring in April. Then it would be the February customers in the second month of their lifetime. It'd be the January customers in the third month of their lifetime. So the total customers that we have in April here would actually be 48 customers total. But we're focused on looking at within each cohort, what is the retention behavior? So the thing that you don't see in the customer count cohort is uh, revenue contraction and revenue expansion. So you can see if a customer cancels, but you don't know if they're downgrading or upgrading their plans. And so the revenue gives you that level of, of nuance. So here you can see for these 14 customers, they were spending 27,000. And so over time, even though it's just the same 14 customers over time, you can see that those 14 customers ended in month nine, uh, spending 32,900. So they did have uh, an increase in their revenue stream. And the reason why this ends is because we're saying January, 2023 is the most recent month of data that we have. So this is the January 2023 month for all of these cohorts, even if we acquired them a long time ago, uh, what their revenue behavior is in January 2023. So to calculate net dollar retention, what we do is, let's go back to that April cohort, we look at uh, the 27,000, and if we were looking at it in month nine of their customer lifetime, we take the 32,900 and we divide it by the initial month. And so here you can see that the net dollar retention was 121% nine months into their lifetime. And so the reason why it's nice to cohortize this data is you can look across cohorts and compare. Are our newly acquired cohorts, let's say the cohorts we've acquired in the last six months, performing as well as our older cohorts? So in month three of their lifetime, we're seeing that our newer cohorts are at 103%, 111, 112, 88. Is this comparable to the older cohorts? I think in this scenario, you can see that, yes, it is comparable, but sometimes you'll see an improvement in your net dollar retention at different points in the customer lifetime, or sometimes you'll see worse net dollar retention at different points in the customer lifetime. So you wanna split out all the cohorts to make sure you can really see with precision what is the customer retention behavior and what is the breakdown across all these different customers that have all of these different ages. 
But one thing that's really important is this is more for operational understanding of your net dollar retention. But generally, net dollar retention is measured on a 12 month cycle. So let me show you how to measure your sort of overall top down company net dollar retention in the next section.